only took double digit three attempts once during the regular season, but he's taken 11 and 12 so far in this series. Despite the big numbers, how do the Warriors feel about giving up those shots moving forward? They absolutely love it. If, if John Morant wants to settle for threes, particularly long threes, they're going to live with that. If he's going to make them, that's going to be okay. The issue for the Warriors is John Morant navigating and getting into the paint. Remember, John Morant led the league in point paints this year as a six foot two point guard, which is outstanding. So the Warriors are now going to really have to adjust their game plan without Gary Payton, who, remember, for, for most of the year, was coming off the bench for all of the Denver series was coming off the bench. And then when they needed a defensive specialist, the stopper, they put him in the starting lineup the first two games. So the adjustment that's going to be made starting tonight in the next few hours when we find out the starting lineup is going to indicate how the Warriors feel like they could win this series. Well, that, that could mean Jordan Poole starting again tonight as opposed to coming back to start the second half. Could mean something else. What uh, And you talked with him yeah. in that uh, bit of tape we heard a moment ago about his assignments in this series, particularly defensively. What do they feel like they need to keep him on the floor as a starter for the rest of the series if necessary? Yeah, and, and, and I'm not so sure. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Jordan Poole is starting. And, and one of the biggest reasons... Is, is the Warriors are trying to figure out, like, is it a psychological thing? Jordan Poole has been so much better as a starter this year. His numbers, his splits indicate that than as a player coming off the bench. But they need him to be sound defensively. You know, Steve Kerr has talked about it throughout the year. One of the reasons why Jordan Poole has earned so many minutes and opportunities to shine on offense is because of the, the growth he has made on defense. And you saw that in the Denver series. And then he got a little undisciplined over the first two games of this series, which is why Steve Kerr felt the need to have Gary Payton in the starting lineup. The big thing with, with Jordan Poole is, is not fouling, is, is making sure he's being disciplined, as I said, and not reaching in. But what I'm intrigued by, Matt, with this series in terms of the starting lineup is that we've talked so much about small ball and how the Warriors have gone to this death lineup. Well, Steve Kerr admitted yesterday that this death lineup that shined against Denver is no longer a lineup he could use for 25 minutes a night. It's going to be much more selective. That being said, with Stephen Adams coming tonight, do the Warriors, with Stephen Adams coming back tonight, do the Warriors say, all right, you have to match up against us and go small ball, or do the Warriors throw Kavon Looney back into the starting lineup and match him up against Stephen Adams? Hmm. So many questions. There's also a large sample of work to suggest Steph Curry and Clay Tamp Thompson won't shoot worse than they did in game two. 16 of 44, yeah. 5 of 23 from three. Is there any level of concern about getting those two going? N none whatsoever about Steph Curry. I think there, there, there probably would be more with Clay Thompson. But Steve Kerr went out of his way yesterday to say that the shooting woes are not at all related to fatigue due to his multiple injuries that he's coming back from. However, I do want to point this out. Klay Thompson is not on the injury report today for tonight's game. However, Klay Thompson was on the injury report prior to game two. And if you watched our broadcast on TNT during game two, we showed you what we believe to be the injury where he injured his right knee, the opposite knee from the knee he had the ACL surgery on. I don't think that's leading to the shooting woes, but what is, I think, a cause for concern, and the Warriors won't say this publicly, is Clay coming back from this injury is not up to the, the defensive standards that he set for himself, and that's why we haven't seen very much of him on John Morant because he's not the Clay Thompson off the Achilles and the ACL that he was prior to those injuries. No, clearly, and it would be a lot to ask for him to be that guy after the two-and-a-half-year yes. layoff. Uh, speaking of injuries, Desmond Bain was limited in Game 2 because of the back injury. What do we know about his condition ahead of Game 3 tonight? Well, interestingly enough, the Grizzlies have, have removed Desmond Bain from the injury report. He's, he's nowhere to be found on there, but we couldn't help but watch Game 2 and see a hobbled man, even just trying to jog back uh, uh, to the offensive set. 
he seemed like there was something bothering him with his back. And and I spoke to him prior to game two. I watched his workout extensively. He looked really good in his pregame workout. He didn't look as good on the court. When I spoke to him, he said, no worries. I'm good to go. No concern. But that is certainly going to be a thing. I'm stunned that he's not on the injury report based on what we saw just two days ago in game two. But again, he said that it's not an excuse yesterday at practice. He said he's good to go. And we will see. They're going to need him. Without Dylan Brooks, Desmond Bain, not only defensively but offensively, has to provide some sort of support to John ja Morant. Because, you know, what Ja's ja done in these first two games, the Grizzlies feel like they could be up 2-0 in this series. And, and for that matter, the Warriors feel like they could be up 2-0 in this series. But they've done it without getting much from Brooks or Bain. And now you don't have Dylan Brooks tonight for Game 3 because he's